Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of Wow Lynch Wow. Dedicated to filmmaker David Lynch, and in the case of this episode, inspired by the upcoming one-year anniversary of the triumphant return of Twin Peaks. There will be spoilers in this video on all things Twin Peaks, so viewers beware. Hard to believe it's been almost a year since the return. I remember the excitement and the incredible anticipation as the hours counted down like it was yesterday. And after waiting so many years for such an improbable comeback, now that a year has passed, to me, it feels like everything that happened in season three was something that was always there. I remember the thrill when things opened on the iconic moment of Laura telling Cooper she'd see him again in 25 years. And then seeing the new opening credits for the very first time and thinking, wow, this is really happening. After spending so much time wondering what a third season of Twin Peaks might have been like, here it was. When considering the return, the one thing I found myself thinking about most was that first scene Lynch showed us after the iconic flashback. And that was the scene where the giant told Cooper to remember 430 to remember Richard and Linda, and he told them to listen to the sounds. At the time, it seemed reasonable to believe that this would have some type of a payoff that made sense later on. After all, we had seen this type of thing before. In previous encounters the giant had with Cooper, the giant's cryptic clues were ultimately something that could be understood. The smiling bag was Jacques' dead body. Without chemicals, Mike pointed. There was a clue at Leo's house. Andy wound up finding that. It's happening again. Well, yep, it was happening again. He forgot something. The note from Audrey. The owls were not what they seemed. This one may not have had the same type of closure the others had, but this was still a theme that came into play and was something that Cooper seemingly understood. But in the return... The Giants' clues never evolved in the same type of way. Now, there's some debate over whether the Giant and the Firemen are actually the same entity. I tend to believe they are, although the appearance of the woman in the realm of non-existence provides reason to think otherwise. So, too, does the existence of doppelgangers and tulpas. Regardless, the dynamics seem the same between the two, and we were led to believe these clues would come into play later on. And they did, but not in the same way we were led to expect. Cooper and Diane crossed over after the 430-mile drive. Then the names Richard and Linda wound up meaning absolutely nothing to Cooper when he read the note. The sounds reappeared, and they did so on two fronts. First, the sounds that the giant played for Cooper surfaced again when Laura disappeared from his grasp. And also, Laura's scream during the disappearance was the same scream we heard earlier when she vanished from the lodge after kissing Cooper. Neither of these repeating sounds seemed to mean much of anything to Cooper when he heard them. FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper is normally sharp as a tack. He has good instincts, a terrific memory, tremendous powers of deduction, but in the very first new scene we were shown, none of the Giants' clues seemed to make any sense to Cooper when they mattered. My question is why? Why didn't Cooper seem to understand anything beyond driving 430 miles? One plausible explanation is that something happened when they crossed over. When Cooper kissed Diane before they crossed, he warned her of such a thing. Did the mere act of crossing over screw up Cooper's memory? Or was it something that happened after they had crossed over? If it was just the act of crossing over itself, I guess that explains it, although that seems like an unsatisfying answer. Was it something that happened after they crossed over? If it was, then I think it must have been one of two things involving Diane. First was when Diane saw a version of herself. The other was when Diane had uncomfortable sex with Cooper before abandoning him with a note signed to Richard from Linda. During their encounter... We hear the same music playing that we heard from 1956 when the Gotta Light Woodsman was creeping around and wreaking havoc. So let's take a quick detour and talk about Diane. 
We had never seen her in the first two seasons or in Fire Walk with me. And after we finally see her for the first time, we soon learn she was raped by Mr. C. Later, we learn that it was actually a tulpa created by Bad Coop to do his bidding. And in learning this, we also discover that tulpas have the memories of their seed host. At the very least, this was strongly implied. And I think the idea of tulpas retaining the memories of their hosts, I think this is an important idea to remember. So Diane's tulpa gets exposed and killed. Then later, Diane emerges after the destruction of Bob. In fact, the eyeless woman becomes Diane. It's strongly suggested that this is another tulpa version of Diane, as a seed was used to create her, and the seed was not unlike the Dougie seed or the previous Diane tulpa seed. I personally never got the impression that the eyeless woman was always Diane. I always thought of the eyeless woman as being more of a shell that became a Diane Tulpa when activated. But I don't think the eyeless woman herself was always Diane in some hibernated form. Either way, I think the evidence strongly suggests that Cooper is traveling with a Diane Tulpa. But that brings up another question, and I honestly can't remember this. Was there any specific reference to the fate of the real Diane? And if we don't know what happened to the real Diane, which I'm not sure, I don't think we ever found out, could the real Diane be stuck in the Carrie Page world? And could Cooper's companion version of the Diane Tulpa have seen the real Diane stuck in this Carrie Page world? Or is every version of Diane we've seen a Tulpa? Or am I wrong and is Cooper actually with the real Diane? Whatever the case, if something changed after they crossed over, it almost certainly involved Diane in some way. But maybe Cooper not understanding the Giants' clues had nothing to do with crossing over at all. Maybe it had something to do with Cooper meddling in the affairs of the past, and that that somehow affected his memory. We do have some weird examples of connected time loop type of things going on, where Laura's scream matches up, and the sounds the giant played also match at that same point. What I've been wondering lately is, what if it wasn't Agent Cooper at all? And maybe that's why the giant's clues made no sense to him when they mattered. I've heard the theory before that Cooper never left the lodge in season three, and that this was all his dream in season three. I've never been a big fan of that myself, although I do think there were some really interesting connections and angles going on with that theory. I 100% believe that Cooper left the Lodge and that he switched places with Douglas Jones, who was a Tulpa creation of Mr. C. Or at the very least, I believe someone left the Lodge and switched places with Douglas Jones. Could the real Cooper be with Janie E. and Sonny Jim, where the Tulpa Dougie Coop was the one that actually went off to save Laura? In some ways, there is something really satisfying about the idea of the real Cooper settling down with Janie E and Sonny Jim, while some infinite supply of Tulpa Coops go off trying to save Laura or to confront Judy or whatever the mission was. But I don't think it's that. What if it wasn't the real Cooper who switched with Dougie, but another Cooper Tulpa who switched with Dougie instead? That idea I mentioned earlier about Tulpas apparently taking the memory of their seed host it's something I find absolutely fascinating, especially when considering the implications of an alternate timeline and a pocket reality. This idea could plausibly explain why Cooper didn't understand the clues when they mattered, although then there's still the problem that Cooper at least did know to drive 430 miles. Then going back to that loop, is it future or is it past? Laura screams and disappears from the lodge. That corresponds with Laura's scream in the woods. Then Cooper somehow winds up back in the lodge. Is it future or is it past? And next time when he leaves, he comes out where we originally saw him enter way back in season two. And Diane is there. And she's waiting for him. That brings us back to the crossover. Cooper forgot the significance of the names Richard and Linda. But somehow, some way... He knew how to track down Laura Palmer. And at this point in time, Cooper was almost acting like a blend of himself and his doppelganger. 
In a show that has a million perplexing and intriguing elements, this is one I have not been able to stop thinking about. Why didn't Cooper seem to understand any of the things that seemed as if they were the most important things to understand? It's part of what made the return so frustratingly brilliant. Cooper, our beloved hero, almost never seemed to have any control over anything. It was a stark contrast to his original portrayal. And not only did Cooper not have control or understand, it was clues from the giant that he didn't understand. The fireman was portrayed as a master of control, putting various pieces into play with the Laura Orb, giving Andy a thorough briefing of pretty much everything that happened, giving Colcan Freddy his glove of power, and even outright manipulating events when he changed the portal outlet. When the giant says and does things, they may never make sense at first, but in the end, his master plans usually play out with pinpoint precision. You have a master manipulator putting pieces in play for a badass FBI agent with tremendous skills and intuition, and we are ultimately left with an apparent major breakdown in communication. I mean, it's not as if Cooper was receiving clues on how to defeat the mother of all evil from Leo Johnson. And in that final moment, when the answers to the riddle seem to contain the utmost important, the woman Cooper's trying to save unleashes a chilling, tragic scream, and our hero, FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, he looks completely baffled. He has no control over the situation whatsoever. With all of the planning and all of the wheels in motion, Cooper has no idea what's going on. He had no idea what to expect. He has no idea what's happening. He doesn't even know what year it is. If Cooper did indeed achieve his primary objective, he certainly seemed oblivious to it. That in itself, seeing our beloved hero look so helpless in his defining moment, that was every bit as disturbing as Laura's scream itself. It was absolutely perfect, and I'm still itching for more. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great night.